Hey guys, Kim here. Papa's fix it shop. Today I'm going to explore an event from my trip that it's worth mentioning. My little travel trailer used uh, an anti sway bar and it would be hooked to this. Let me screw this or zoom this in. So this guy, the ball's here. I've taken it off. You can see it's seriously bent. And this holds like a like a brake. It's a long metal tube with another tube inside with brake material and you tighten it down so the trailer can't it makes it hard for the trailer to move back and forth as you turn corners. The purpose is if a trailer wants to oscillate because of uh, weight or balance issues, this tends to stop it. So I was driving across country and sometimes conditions on the roads would get that trailer romping around. I couldn't go over 40 miles an hour for periods on real bad highways. And finally, just outside of Weatherford, Texas, I went into a parking lot to turn around and this thing just broke off. It just snapped the rest, you know, pulled the thing off, broke everything. And the, the, the anti-sway bar, what they call it, it fell down and hit the ground anyway. So what I had to do was I could drive the trailer without the sway bar, you know, up 20, 30 miles an hour. Anything over 30 miles an hour and you hit a bump or a piece of wind and it'd start moving back and forth. So to do an aside, that trailer is tongue heavy. And there is no way that I can put enough weight in the back to get the tongue high enough, you know, the weight off the tongue to make it neutral. So, you know, this is a guy that drove class A trucks for 50 years and as part of my job. So I know about trailer and trailer loading and you want the, the center of weight right over the wheels. But in a travel trailer, that's almost impossible when it's that short and that's the key. If it was a longer trailer with tandem axles, it wouldn't be an issue really. So anyway, back to my, my trip. So I'm on Interstate 20, Weatherford, Texas. This hitch that I've been struggling with for three years to keep that trailer, I've tried a lot, decided that I should bite the bullet and fix it. But I'm on the highway with a trailer and a truck full of Christmas presents. So what I did was I went into Weatherford, Texas and I found a um, hitch supply, the trailer hitch place. Let's see if I can find it here. I don't have it readily available, but these really good guys had hitches and I went down there and I was gonna have them put a hitch on. And they looked at it and we all scratched our heads and we checked out and we did some measurements and they had a Kurt um, load leveling hitch, which involves a different plate with two of these if you want to use them but realistically there's two big torsion bars of solid steel that hook on each side and they have clamps on the tongue of the trailer and what they do is they take the weight of the trailer and move it onto the truck so knowing that that would be a solution i told them put the hitch on and they pretty much said we'd love to but we can't we can't put it on here because since my trailer has a small tongue and there's a battery box in the tongue. There was no room for the brackets to clamp onto the tongue. They said you'd have to cut the brackets off where they wrap around and then weld them on. Well, I said, cool, cut them off and weld them on. And they informed me that we'd like to, but we don't have a welder. So the suggestion was they gave me a couple of phone numbers of welders nearby that I could go take the hitch and try and get them to weld it on. Instead of going through that, I put the hitch in the trailer, I drove to a Harbor Freight, and I bought the, not the cheapest welder I could find, 
but the cheapest 120 volt flux core MIG welder, which was $139. Then I went back, I went to a hotel. So once I had the welder in my, in my truck, I went to Hampton Inn in Weatherford, Texas. I always stay at Weather at Hampton Inns when I can, and I highly recommend it. And, uh, if and anybody needs a hotel, that's the place to go. These people are great. It's mid-range. It's got good amenities, and it's they're always clean, and they give you breakfast and dinner, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I am not sponsored by Hampton Inns, by the way, but I highly re recommend these guys. They know how to treat their people. So I pull into the Hampton Inn and I tell the, the desk clerk that I want to go into their parking lot and weld the trailer back together. And to their credit, they said, dude, if you don't block anybody from parking and you're out there and do whatever you need to do, happy to help you. If you need anything, let us know. So I went back. Um, fortunately, I had my Honda generator, which is a 120 generator. And this guy basically has two 15 amp 120 outlets. This signs on 120. And I had taken a bunch of tools because we plan on doing some work on my family's house and all that. But I happen to have a grinder, so I was able to grind it off and weld that trailer together. I didn't have a helmet, and they give you a cheap like face shield, but you can't hold it and weld it at the same time, so I pretty much did it with a set of dark sunglasses, welded it back together. And so I thought I'd review this little welder. I never in my life did I believe a little welder like this would be able to do a good job. I was a professional welder for, you know, fabricator for a long time, and I always used Miller's, Lincoln's. Um, but this is a good opportunity for this little $130 welder. $139, I think, plus tax. So that's what I'm going to do. So stand by and we'll let you see. I've got some scrap metal. I'm going to weld it together and see what kind of results I get under control conditions as opposed to half dark in a parking lot, uh, you know, with crude tools. Should be fun. Stand by. Okay, so the number of this guy is 63583 if you're interested. It's basically got a speed for the feet of the wire and on and off switch. And you can put it on minimum power or maximum power. This guy doesn't really tell you what the difference is. So there's nothing, maybe in the, in the manual, but the fact of the matter is in the case of the trailer in the parking lot, I could not run it at max because it takes 20 amps and I have 15 amp breakers. The minimum I could weld at, without, it, without it popping a breaker on the on the generator so and it's got an indicator it looks like it means if the like a temperature of some kind hits a certain temperature and it's gonna shut down like a thermal protector and it's course 120 standard socket so what I'm gonna do I got some metal here and I'm gonna just Run some test welds and see what happens. And see how good I can do when I don't have to work in the dark on the ground without a helmet. Now, the first thing I'll say is I don't really like this type of, of torch. I like a little more curl on it, you know, so it's because you have to, you have to pretty much, it's awkward to weld this way for me. But it definitely works. I don't know if this thing is that way because 
the wire won't curl or it just it was a cheap torch so I actually thought about taking it apart and uh, seeing if I can't put more curve on it but we'll see I'm gonna weld it as is so let me get set up and then let's show a couple okay so I'm gonna do a butt weld on it do it on minimum which is the same setting that I used I was on six on the wire and minimum on the welder so got a green light and I can hear a cooling fan all right let's see what happens It rattles a little bit. I don't think it is a loose fan. I think it's just the case is so so tiny and, and flimsy that it just rattles. Let's see. Well, it's a cold weld. Not getting very good penetration. I suspect. Well, I can't break it real easy. Let's try again. Well, we got a lot of heat on the back. Not bad. I mean, I can't complain about the connection there for small. I think what I'll do. Put another one. Tell you what, it throws a lot of spatter. It sucks. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to put one right here. Let's see. See if I can get it right about here. Let's see. No. I'm going to flick it to high. I'm going to take it up to eight. Looks a lot better. So, I'm going to pull the camera off, stand by for some hand job. There's the two welds. Low power, high power. That is not bad at all. It's actually a little undercut going on there. So yeah, let me try one more. Stand by.
so let's see now. Probably what I want to do now. Is that in focus? Mm. Oh yeah. Right there. You can tell it's kind of cockeyed because, you know, it's just scrap. So what I'm gonna do is do these outside welds. And I haven't, you know, chamfered it or anything, but what the heck. Let's do a, well, it's up. It's not quite vertical. It's way off of vertical. But. Oh, that's not too good. Should have to tie it down. Huh? from my shaky hands, right? Look at that friggin' the spatter is horrible. But the honest truth is it's a friggin' good weld. Unbelievable. One more test while I reset. All right, last test weld. This is gonna be a fully prepped butt weld with 45 degree chamfers on the edge to fill it with the, with the filler rod with this wire. Let's see what happens, we're gonna do it. We're going to stay on eight. In fact, I'm going to go up a little bit. Give him a little more wire. So here's the other thing. This guy, according to the specifications, is rated to weld up to three sixteenths, and I'm welding quarter inch hot rolled plate. So yeah, let's see. Well, I can tell you, it's, it's plenty hot, man. It's pretty good. Yeah, right on the floor. So I can report that it gets very little penetration. Let's see. That's a pretty good weld. Thumbs up on this guy.
for 139 bucks, it ain't bad.